Well, a very warm welcome back to Powerboating Adventures. And you may recognise, you may recognise this place, Cambrian Boats. Robin Vaughan's fabulous boat company here in Swansea in South Wales. And we're here again to uh, have a look and to let you all have a look through and a rummage around the one at the back, the NC37, brand new 2023, beautiful Genoa um, boat. But just before we head down there, apart from what's in this fantastically full yard, ready no doubt for your phone calls, and I'll let you know the phone numbers and the contact details here in the description below the film, but I thought I'd just pop you into the showroom as well and just show you some of the uh, other little offerings they've got in here as well that might of course go on the back of your NC37 but also might be a standalone bit of fun for you. Look at this, this is quite nice. An Incas 525 canoe, 2200, 4.8k for that nice little Linda Sportsman and then some nice tenders as well. High fields here. That will certainly get some speed up. Fantastic. So certainly some nice, uh, some really nice bits and pieces for you to have a look at if you can get yourself down here to Swansea. Or of course, as you will probably have seen, uh, the links are in the description below. Um, there's also a very good website that you can have a browse through what they've got here before you travel so that you can identify what you fancy. Have a chat with Robin arrange perhaps a viewing and you never know there might even be one on the water but certainly Robin will look after you here at Cambrian Boats in terms of uh, anything you may uh, may be interested in in here or in the yard that we're uh, about to head out into and wow look at that one that is a lovely high field that one high field patrol 600 little 150 Honda on the back of this but I bet it absolutely flies this one Lovely. Any outboard choice as well that you've got there. If you need a little outboard for your tender or your dinghy, very nice. And of course, we mustn't forget Bailey. Hello, Bailey. How are you, young man? Are you well? Oh, yeah, look at that. We got, yes, we got a movement. Good boy. Yes, come on then. Look, we got some tail movement as well. So this is Bailey, who also looks after Cambrian boats as well as Robin, although Bailey is the boss, to be fair. Anyway, enough of this chat. Let's go and have a look at the NC37. And still some fabulous boats in this yard. This is my favourite patch of yard in South Wales. As you can see, look at them all. So as I say, don't forget, check the website, check the phone numbers. And if anything in here, be it used or new, is taking your fancy, then make sure you get in touch with Robin. Little 1095 hiding around the back there. I say little little because of course does look little against this fabulous NC37 which we come to show you today. Look at that. And they look so much bigger when they're out of the water. Lovely privacy glass down the side there and I love that um, love the N37 NC37 logo there on that sort of chromed chromed background really nice that. And some of your outlets as well for your exhaust and your pump out, but while it's out the water it gives us a chance to have a good look round the outside. A fabulous Mer Cruisers 270 horse in both of those, but we'll get to that detail in a minute. And in fact I'll put some up on the screen now just to give you a few facts and figures about this 37 just as we're looking at the outside before we uh, before we head on before we head on inside. See as well look Another good chance you can actually see the zip wakes as well, which of course on our last one that we did from Cambrian Boats, which was that fantastic 10.5 cc, you uh, don't get to see them much because they're in the water. But you can see, in fact, there you can see the little the little um, flaps that um, come down there when they activate themselves. They just drop down like that and do obviously the the updated version of your Lenko trim tabs which was more of a manual process set these to fully auto 
Um, and in fact, in some some configurations of boat, you can actually have uh, more than a single pair of zip weights on. You can actually add so. But they were, we had them on our 895 and they were a lovely bit of kit. And if you want to know, incidentally, a little bit more about the zip weights, um, particularly on our 895, then we've got a film on the channel there. Uh, if you have a scroll through the films, which uh, tells you uh, specifically a bit more about the zip weights and the sort of performance changes that um, and how they work when we were underway in our 895. So check that out if you want to know a little bit more. Um, bow thruster up there as well. This one obviously yet to have all its anti-fouling put on, waiting for its new owner. Now this NC37 uh, is for sale. As I say, it's a brand new boat, 2023. Um, so if you want to know more about it, do get in touch with Robin. You'll even get your choice of anti-foul color, copper coat. Copper coat on there would be absolutely fantastic. But. That gives you a really good view of it from the outside. And you'll have seen there from the facts and figures on the screen. It's a fair old size and a fair old weight, this thing. But um, those Mer Cruisers are absolutely fantastic in terms of performance. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at getting, getting you inside. You can see as well, in fact, now we're down at this level, it's really handy. You can see the size of this bathing platform here out the back. Obviously, it could double up as your uh, a storage for um, for a tender. Um, but it's rare that we can get right down at this sort of water level and get such a good view. Um, this um, this section at the back here, this seat at the back here, actually slides back and forward as well. So you can actually get gain by having the seat in the forward position about another foot or so, 300 mil, um, which is dead handy. Um, and we'll have a look in these storage areas at the back in a sec. But, um, but yes, a lovely swim platform area out the back here. And of course it's got hidden away just next to our access ladder here. You can see this is our uh, standard Genoa style bathing ladder with, um, uh, with obviously steps up. That concertina is up and then slides in under there. You can just see the fitting under there where it slides. And then you've got your, as you come up the ladder, you've got these um, sort of grab handles here, chromed grab handles, really beautifully done. Uh, together with obviously these two, uh, these two uh, sort of mooring points really for your tender or perhaps to tether your sups or your, your uh, water toys that you might be, uh, might be out on the water with and enjoying. Um, so a really nice area at the back here for access to the water and uh, all things water fun. Absolutely great, we've not even got on board yet. Fantastic. Okay, so now we're on the uh, swim platform on the back. I've just moved the seat forward here, and in fact, you can see uh, you can see the space you gain just by the, the uh, slight fade in the teak finish there. Um, so it's about, as I say, about another 300 mil. We've got the uh, got the locks just popped in, and they come over that way there. But then, as you'll see in a minute, to be able to effectively open these beautiful doors here and get them uh, all the way back, then uh, then the seat needs to be in its next position back. But of course, that if you're in uh, if you're in water toy mode and uh, you want the space, you've got your tender or your inflating sups or or kayaks or whatever to to uh, to launch off the back here, then uh, a really good a good width space. In fact. If I've got my uh, tape measure, I'll give you an idea of what that is because that's a really good, a really good width there. So, and we are, yeah, about 47 inches, so 1.2 meters width, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and that, of course, goes with the other data which you saw on the screen there, which of. Uh, Course said uh, that you know the beam that uh, that this lovely NC37 has got really nice chrome cleats there, and then that storage that I mentioned when we were just before we came in, you got your shore power in there, there, inlet there, together with a bit more storage, um, and then this obviously can be for your your life raft, um, or indeed for you know your your uh, boys and similar. And there you go, look a full complement in there. Waiting, squeaky clean, not a scrap of dirt on all those ropes, ready for the very proud new owner 
if this one is if this one is catching your eye and I suspect it won't be around for long it is absolutely stunning let's just pop those catches back on so um, just with the one there's a clip each side but if I pop that one up I've already popped that one up so if we now just slide this slide this back you'll just see us gaining that gaining that extra there we go that's just clipped back and you can see what it's revealed there is um, this is a door stay so the next before we have a look in the cockpit locker there um, I'll definitely show you this because this is absolutely lovely um, you've got this lovely glazed glass door which then opens back but then with a pop of the lock here and there's a bottom one as well you can swing this whole unit back which then just drops in line over there there we go stows in one of those holes isn't that fantastic and gives you that lovely sort of continuous deck almost straight from our teak cockpit into our saloon area carpeted saloon area absolutely lovely but while we're still opening hatches we might as well do this one as well because this glass side also opens up so a gas strut there so it's really really pushes up firmly and then there's a catch up at the top here there we go so now if i uh, just stand you back here you can see what a fantastic effect that creates we've got our larger area at the front uh, entertaining area here in the cockpit space but now we've just got that flow into the saloon area it is just uh, just a beautiful spot and of course it wouldn't be complete without uh, a space for an outdoor bar there or indeed any other storage you might want to keep there and of course apart from drinks containers under there this also is a lovely piece of teak that folds back there and gives you a nice dining space out in this cockpit space very nice indeed um, you'll see as well just down here the sort of scuppers bit uh, drainage there which obviously takes any water that's been sloshing around out here back out um, through the outlets on the boat um, and it's also of course got if I just move this lovely chromed entry gate which just lifts up see that that nice with the uh, all in chrome the Jeannot brand there lovely um, I can feel a bit of chrome polish coming on can't you and then uh, hiding away under those are our usual bits there's our deck wash so obviously this scuppers bit there will be quite useful if you're swilling down the decks out the back here after a day uh, a day out with the water toys um, and uh, and also of course can rinse yourself off hot and cold water out the back here unlike some of our smaller genos that you'll have seen on the channel um, this one's got um, you can get a nice warm shower to rinse yourself off once you've had enough of all that fun out the back here close those up you'll see as well just to the left not my trainers they're not much of a feature but uh, you've got the the classification there of the boat here you can see that it's a b8 uh, or a c and or d10 so that obviously relates to the number of people maximum number of people a b8 or a c d10 and just to the left my trainers keep wanting to get famous um, just to the left we've got our manual bilge there which as you probably know takes a small handle in there which then just becomes a manual pump if uh, if either of the bilges that this boat's fitted with um, were to fail on you you've still got a backup option okay so before we head into that lovely saloon area let's uh, let's show you in the cockpit space under there cockpit locker space um, and have a look where those two fabulous mer cruisers are right so we've just flipped round the uh, flip round the hatches and then with the wonders of those gas struts even though it's a very heavy unit just bring it up very carefully there that's it just got to its stop point and look at those so there's our 270 horse Mer cruisers what a setup and what an engine bay full of power that is so these probably looking at planing around about sort of 15 16 knots a good cruising at 21 22 knots and probably wide open around about 30 knots just depending on sort of sea condition and load and uh, those usual factors that uh, that can affect um, that can affect the wide open throttle speeds but um, beautifully set out down there and of course you've got a little step there 
which uh, gets us down there. So let me just pop the camera down for a minute and we'll drop down a level. There we go. So just a step down here, you can see as well, which is why also I wanted to come down. They've got an additional storage area there, the little sort of box shape. And then you can see right down underneath that you've got another void there, which, uh, which could certainly take some storage too. Um, the black, both sides, these black tanks here, those are obviously your diesel tanks twin tanks and the fillers are just uh, they're actually both on the same both on the starboard side which is quite handy actually um, when we had our 895 we had a filler starboard filler port but of course um, the law of you know who said that uh, the filling station that we used on a pretty regular basis at the marina their hoses didn't quite reach from one side of the boat to the other so we had to flip the boat around each time we fueled um, so i must say i would definitely have liked two fillers on that side and of course there's the uh, and there's the filters there another one just hiding behind that the diesel fuel filters and all the bits and bobs that go with the go with the top of your diesel tanks there Engine dipsticks over on that side and just down there. And if I just get back under here as well, some of the fire suppressant systems. And you can see in that a lot of the other bits and pieces that help to make this boat function. Lovely. So not certainly wouldn't be enough room to have a party down here, but um, but beautifully laid out and has that lovely feel and feel and smell of brand new boat. Oh, can't beat it, can you, eh? Right, let's go back. Up. And there, as I said, there's our uh, there's our two diesel fillers. Good spot that, and of course they've added this little little access door as well. So that does make refueling a lot easier than our eight nine five. Fantastic. Right, so let's come on in and have a look at this fantastic set out in here. The first thing you can see is this has got this actual end piece, this seat on the end here, is like a, an add-on module because this, whoops, there we go. Um, so you can see it's, first of all, it's storage, um, but you can see it's just got that center screw in the middle there that just, you can just loosen off and then that whole box unit can come out. So. A, it um, is an optional addition to have that seating, but that's also relevant as well because this boat has, um, or the NC37 I should say, has an option uh, to double up as another berth, as well as the berth that we'll see in a minute down there. This has also got an option as a berth with the table that will move up and down, and then obviously the table top and extra cushions then form what is a, uh, what is a sort of mattress space for an additional berth, which for someone shining like this would be absolutely fantastic, wouldn't it? What a spot, but as you'll see further down in the cabins, there's some lovely spaces down below as well. So anyway, that's this, uh, that's this little extra sort of seating bit. I'm sure I'll pop that on there. So as we work our way down the uh, port side of the uh, saloon area, you'll see that this table obviously folds out and therefore you could seat a fair few around there, couldn't you? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, good. Good six, seven, if not more, with our little module on the end here. Really nice dining space. But with that as well, certainly not as though you're gonna be short of space for entertaining and having a very pleasant lunch out on the water. Um, the sliding glass here as well, I mean, the glass all the way around here, it's just fantastic such with that open area at the back I love that open area at the back and of course on the port side lovely sliding windows as well which complement then what's above us and what's above us fantastic look at that that gives you a clue electronic sliding sunroof together with the usual sort of Juno um, sunshades and over this side fly screen there one or the other but um, and obviously we've not got the power on, the batteries connected on the boat at the moment, so uh, otherwise I'd show you the sliding roof, but I think we've got one on NC33. We've got on the channel one, which is a very similar setup in terms of an electric roof. So if you wanted to see that operating or how it operated, then uh, have a search on our channel and have a look at that NC33, which has got uh, the similar sunroof. Um, 
working our way up the starboard side though just before we look at the helm station um, this is really nicely set out as well this has got our double burner there gas burner obviously hot and cold running water little tap there that hinges up on itself uh, this uh, just obviously adds a bit more um, a bit more heat security in that uh, being a metal surface if you were to shut the lid when this uh, when this burner is still a little bit warm, then it just prevents your um, it prevents your uh, carcassing for the covers getting too hot. Um, covered with a nice little bit of sort of leathery type leatherette inlay there, and then as we work our way down, there's obviously storage drawers there, and then um, and then you can see together with those twin burners up top here, you've got a full-on gas oven which again um, is very handy to have because obviously being fully gassed then you're not restricted to, uh, to needing generator power or electricity when you're out on the water. Um, so you've got uh, a really nice ability to be able to cook, grill, whatever, saucepans, the lot um, with all those facilities. A little bin in there together with some of your gas taps and a tiny bit more storage in there. And then down the bottom here you can see a few bits and pieces waiting for the new owner. And of course, hiding behind here is your Dometic fridge. The first of your Dometic fridges, we're going to find another one of those a bit further down in the boat. Very nice, too, little ice maker there. On the end here as well, hiding behind here, there is, just find the catch there. There you go. So you've got some bottle storage there. Can't quite see that, don't think. Let's get a bit of light in there for you. Yeah, just pick up the bottle storage in there and a little bit more on the shelf there. Some of your switches. If I can find any pics of uh, the internal lighting when it's on, both in the day and night, I'll see if I can pop those as an overlay over the screen for you. Just give you an idea of how it lights up at night because there's lots of recessed LEDs around the base of the units here and of course dotted around the deck. There's also uh, similarly pin LEDs and blue LEDs that make it a fabulous space. As the daylight fades um, and you go into the night time then it's a really lovely space to be really nice lighting that sets uh, sets the mood very well indeed and you can see as well on the floor um, they've also thought well about that um, in that it's a lovely soft covering obviously if you're around in socks or bare feet like like in fact I am today but um, but then very easy to pop off if you're gonna have a day fully out on the water people coming in and out you can easily pop the carpeting up roll it up stow it away and this is a really nice finish as well it's a sort of light isn't it a light sort of timber type finish so um, that's very nice but what they've also got here as well is if I just uh, pop those first two poppers you'll see that we've got a catch here that if we pop those up pop those up and then lift this you can see that what we've got there is either um, a really nice storage area see it lifting up on its gas struts there or what this is as well is access into the third cabin so uh, and I say third cabin because it's probably the smallest of the three but it's also of course an option that uh, if you didn't need three cabins this would be the classic area to store perhaps all of your exterior cushions and covers um, really quick to pop this open and and in they go into a very nice little storage area down there but once we get down into that third cabin you'll see that there's also a possibility of course of it being used uh, as a berth so let's just pop that back down again they clip in there we go and those poppers just pop back on there there we go so that's a really nice touch I like that nice quick and easy storage from perhaps out the back there where you're gonna store your cushions below in that storage okay so as we work our way forward front of the boat you can see there actually it's got um, they're using this sort of matte colored finish it's like an anti-glare finish and in fact it's a very perfect <laughs> it's actually a perfect day to demonstrate that because with the Sun as it really is 
out in uh, no i shouldn't say that it's fantastic down here in south wales um but uh, but with the sun shining straight at us uh, you can see we're not getting much glare off that at all that's the idea matte color anti-glare you can see the vents going around there for obviously demisting in perhaps the cooler times and you can see as well we've got some nice plexiglass light that is allowing light down into the uh, cabin space below but this of course as a lot of you I'm sure have spotted already has got that nice Genoa you know, feature where instead of the chair being part of this dining area you can merely grab this lift it up and then flip it flip it back there we go do it one-handed balancing your camera um, then uh, then it's got this nice little step up there then when you can let's go sit up here when you can have a sit up as co-pilot as you're underway with a fantastic view out airstream coming in perhaps through the roof sliding door open at the side windows open at the side and then that lovely through flow of air right through to the back of the boat there with those lovely open spaces and opening windows and doors so it is a really and in fact a perfect day to be to be getting the feel for you as to what it's what it's like when you're out home when you're lucky enough to be out in one of these lovely sunny days out on the water wherever you are in the world um, across to the helm station this as we've said already uh, has got our fantastic ignitions there for our uh, two fantastic 270 horse mer cruisers uh, but it's also got a nice mix i like this mix of um, a few of the sort of chrome trimmed dials as well yes it's got our um, you know very advanced mfd um, display there but um, but it's also then complemented by some of these sort of one could say slightly retro chrome rim dials which are really nice uh, that's quite a good one as well that one in the middle the steering shows you exactly sort of what your rudder position would be um, and therefore without even having to think about it you can just glance at your center dial there which tells you exactly where your your steering position is um, obviously the full suite of um, of Raymarine equipment together with of course those two fantastic functions um, the joystick here which is absolutely fantastic um, you'll have seen me wax lyrical about these on many of, of the boats that um, uh, that we've looked round and looked in detail at and for good reason really they are just they're just the next level of um, of control that you can obviously get from these suite of controls when we had our uh, 795, that was a single-engined um, 200 Honda BF200. Then we had the twin um, 200 yams on the 895 offshore, um, neither of which, of course, had the joystick control. And when I first saw these working, it was like, you know, one of those hallelujah moments where you think, yeah, that's exactly the perfect bit of kit that, that uh, you could add to a boat. Um, because of course at low speed, at manoeuvring, at getting in and out of your berth, um, it is just the most fantastic bit of equipment. Um, if you're coming in against tide, against wind, against both, if you're, uh, if you're living in Pembrokeshire sometimes, um, then, uh, then yeah, a really nice compliment to that. Um, it's obviously got uh, additional functionality as well, where you can, um, with a single little nudge to the left or a nudge to the right you can uh, you can alter your course it's got autopilot on this so that single nudge will alter the course one degree or indeed you can just turn the top like that and that does five degrees in either direction uh, uh, to alter your autopilot set course you can add waypoints um, you know you can as you'd imagine with 2023 technology it's got uh, superb functionality GPS linked um, and uh, and it's just a tremendous addition to a boat not only of this size but also as you've seen that some of the smaller boats Genoa boats are now being fitted and have options of being fitted with the joystick technology zip wakes which we saw under the boat there good to see them actually um, out of the water um, obviously got as you can see it's got the fully auto mode um, which as I say if you've seen that film on the zip wakes on our channel um, we'll tell you all about that sort of functionality and how it all works and then of course to complement those chrome dials you've got the sort of more standard switching which we'll all recognize from many as you know from uh, from our wipers and washers to water pumps to heated screens to lighting and of course our two bilges as well um, a slip um, bow thruster that we also saw at the front there this is a um, chain counter for our anchor 
which again is very useful in fact um, to know exactly what's in the water and that goes with um, some good technology on this uh, which is sort of 3D sonar for your, which the transdu transducer creates on the package that uh, that this is fitted with. So um, you know, if you were that amazing 3D view, together with your chain counter, um, together with perhaps somebody up at the front. I always prefer to be at the front. Um, at the bow of the boat to be able to sort of physically see what the anchor was doing and what direction it was going and you know whether it was gripped or not but uh, with a combination of all that technology then uh, then you really can't put a foot wrong slight fingers crossed always but um, but no some lovely technology which make uh, it a real pleasure to uh, to take this to take this boat out and about um, as we work down there you'll see obviously it's got its VHF radio again Raymond at Ray Marine of course um, and you'll also see um, that the steering wheel is adjustable, a bit like if you've seen the other one on our channel of the 10.5cc that had the same steering. Let's just pop that back down again there, so you can set it any way you want. Um, it's also got obviously very similar uh, seating that we've seen on all of our Genos in the full seating mode or of course our lean mode. Um, but what this has also got as well and in fact if you've seen our nc33 film you'll remember that feature as well it's got a little padlock there and then this bit this bit drops down there um, it also reveals while we're down here a little bit of storage there we go um, but uh, uh, but of course this gives you that little bit of just see the, the sort of gap there a little bit of extra height which means that if we now stand up my head is almost out not quite um, but a really nice sort of standing point where you can uh, get a really lovely view from your uh, from your helm station here the twin throttles um, they're obviously uh, very similar to some of those we've looked at on the channel you've got the ability to one lever um, so that you can just, uh, once you're underway, you can just uh, neutralise so that the one runs both both of those Mercruiser engines. You've got your engine tilts, um, and then some of the other functionality as as well of uh, of the fine tuning and fine control of the uh, of those two uh, two engines. And of course, before we head outside, last but by no means least, there's a little uh, a little bit more storage there. So I think before we head down, let's, as the sun's out, let's pop out the side here. Really nice side access, big sliding door this is. Immediate access to your midship cleat there. So it could make even single-handed handling of this with that amazing joystick control and cleats that, that close to you. It could make it even a one person mooring. Um, but look at this lovely space up the front here. In fact, as is traditional guys I'm gonna to have to just take take the seat now again um, I could think of worse views in that a 1095 in front of us here it could be worse it could be the green crane but um, but still what a nice spot this is isn't it eh? the sun out and as far as you know as far as you can see Fantastic. Uh, obviously these do go fully back down so that this becomes sort of a whole sun pad, uh, but very nice too. Look at these nice little drinks holders. Um, and then as we carry on up the front here, we've got our good old Lumar windlass. And let's pop this up. There we go. There's our, uh, there's our really good sized anchor, anchor chain locker. For our chain and road, there's our remote for our for deploying the anchor, and obviously the space just down there for our for our manual windlass activation on there. There we go. Safety safety hook on the anchor there, just in case something fails and it doesn't deploy itself. But isn't that lovely? What a lovely view back down this. Really substantial railings here, good height as well. Sort of not far off waist height on me. Um, all the way down and then obviously you've got the steps down. Um, slightly narrower over this side. 
um, just a little bit narrower and obviously you haven't got the step down but still the railings are a good height and they're sort of angled backwards so so it's um, it's perfectly feasible as we just roll down here perfectly feasible to make your way along the uh, along the boat towards the rear here there we go all the way back round fantastic okay so let's go and have a look at the cabins down here the steps incidentally that I'm just going down now they're also um, being you know they like to hide things away so look at that another tiny little bit of storage got a little bit of storage there and then right down the bottom here you've got a little drawer now that's what you call using every bit of space so as we're down at step level then let's have a look at this um, this sort of extra space here um, you can see it's open obviously open to the steps hence you know yes it could be a berth but it sort of it, it sort of lends itself quite a lot as well to storage um, you can see it's got some storage around the sides here which we'll try and have a look at show you in a minute but uh, just before we go in you can see there's our um, second fridge another little dramatic fridge same size as our one up there this little ice maker very nice too but then of course they've added some little pull out trays some more storage to the right there just fantastic and of course as you'll have spotted already there's our battery cutouts and one or two other bits so we've uh, i've just got down a little bit lower pop the light on on the camera hopefully you can see down into the into this space here um, I've folded this cushion it's actually joined in the middle here so you can sort of fold it over because if you're of course going to use it for stowing water toys or water skis or whatever it may be in here then uh, it just stops you uh, damaging the cushion and of course unsurprisingly if I can balance that on my head we've got uh, we've got another little void here for yet yet more storage and you'll see despite not obviously having a door you can see what I mean about it being open now this is just the framework of the steps um, it's obviously got these which run on a series of poppers along there um, so uh, so you could get a little bit more privacy but I should think most certainly it's perhaps um, a suitable space for um, for a youngster let me just give you a rough idea of the, of the height yep so you're looking at about about 25 26 inches headroom in here um, and then width wise let's have a quick look at width, width wise you're looking about 47 inches yeah so about yeah no, about 48 four foot just over 1.21 meters um, and then the overall length of the mattress that I'm on now is uh, have a quick look at that yeah that is 75 so yeah over six foot so you know it's a perfectly perfectly reasonable space for uh for youngsters perhaps um if you're not going to be using it as a storage space um and then if i clamber my way down to here we can see you've got unsurprisingly yet more more storage hidden away there little light there and then a little cubby for storage there okay so that's our that's our smallest cabin so and you can see in the second cabin then mid-size one little magnetic door catch on the back there you've got some cupboarding there little cubby space there as well and then underneath that seat a little bit more storage hiding under there shelf along the back there for knickknacks and or perhaps smart devices charging with some usb sockets there little usable space there got some uh, curtains that come all the way across that but obviously as you remember from the outside that sort of privacy glass as well little opening hatch there some reading lights nicely done and then here's our second cabin space so let me just get out the tape and i'll give you an idea of size of this so from the back there to the end of our cushions here uh, 83 inches so yeah nearly seven 
seven foot of space there, so that's a really good size that is. And now let's just do the opposite direction. And there we go, 62 and a half, 63 inches across. So again, a sort of king size, bed size, or yes, more than your standard four foot six double basically. Um, now obviously you can see as well that this has got this centre section here, so all of that can come out um, and you've then got perhaps two single beds as well. So a number of configuration options, again, not uh, as you go into the cabin itself, you again limited slightly with your head height, um, but obviously with your head up this end, reading head end of the bed up this end, you've got enough space here to uh, manoeuvre your way in and out um, of the space. At the back there, those voids where you can just see the catches, that's obviously more of the uh, inner workings of the uh, of the NC37, hidden away behind those panels, but obviously panels easily sighted there for any maintenance needs that uh, you may have. Okay, so that's our second cabin. Uh, now, the toilet, the heads and the shower area have been separated. So uh, one doesn't block the other in effect, in the nicest possible meaning of the word block, um, in terms of people traffic. Um, the toilet is an electric flush. It's fresh water fed as well, which uh, I can hear a lot of you cheering about that, that know about that uh, nice smell you occasionally get when uh, seawater has been in the uh, toilet for a while. It's that sort of rotten eggy type sulfur smell, which isn't the best to greet you when you uh, first open the doors when you haven't been to your boat for a while. So uh, yeah, freshwater flush, macerator as well. Um, and of course, as you can see there, a nice little sink um, as part of the setup in the heads here. Um, and then over the other side, straight across, we've got our shower area. Drain built in there, really nice little setup here with the um, shower head that pops out of here. And then fix, fixes in just up on there. Just turn that round a bit there. Um, fixes in up the top there. Mix the tap there. You can close yourself in with this little bifold door um, to contain the water. Pop that one back in. There we go. Um, little blind on there, privacy blind there. And then you've got some uh, some additional storage there. UK plugs already fitted on this, um, mirror just above me there, um, and your mixer tap and basin together with a little bit of storage underneath there. There we go, let's put some light on there, there we go. Fantastic. Full length mirror as well, just to my right there. So into our master cabin, isn't that lovely? I'll hopefully overlay some pics of, um, of what it looks like with some of this lovely uh, recessed LED lighting in here. Um, uh, got a door here that just shuts behind us there. So we can see that. So we can see that we get the cushions at the moment, which are out there, at, um, provide that extra light but you can also see these are opening hatches, two opening hatches as well together with our uh, fly screen and sunscreens so um, then together with these lights at the um, together with these windows I should say long windows at the side here you can get this whole this whole um, master cabin bathed in a lot more natural light which is really nice um, you can see as well that round the sides there is these sort of aircraft type lockers here. Um, I can just reach, reach that one over there. There we go. Aircraft style lockers, curtains there, reading lights if you need it, USB sockets just halfway along the bed there. This little um, sort of tiny little vanity type unit I guess it would be. Um, you've got a little bit of wardrobe style storage in there. And that again lifts up and provides a little bit of storage there. But what this has also got is it's also got a lift up end of the bed, which gives you access into another colossal storage space full 
of goodies of course there's the Genoa box and there's the Genoa bag that we know and love and have seen a lot of those in those new boats I wonder if they've got we're gonna to have to have a look aren't we we're gonna to have to have a look and see if we've got the items in the box yeah there it is our deck soap our chrome cleaner our bit of electrical tape and our good old clips yeah don't think I've ever found a box with something different in it certainly need a bit of that chrome cleaner for some of those lovely bits of chrome around the boat and that'll be all of the manuals waiting for a bit of light bedtime reading for the proud new owner of this uh, you can see as well it's got see these pieces here well what that's for is if I shut this lid again this infill piece here so you can take that out you can then push this whole unit back again if you don't need quite so much leg room on the end here so in fact without further ado let's uh, do our usual measure up and give you an idea of what leg room you do actually have so there we go so we've got the extended piece just in there which is only about 100 mil something like that but we're about 70 yeah 78 so six foot six just coming up to two meters so pretty reasonable size and then width wise width wise you're looking at yeah about 60 inches so that's a good yeah 1.5 to 1 meter 520 yeah so that's a good size really nice size master cabin um, and as you've seen there from some of those pictures I've overlaid a really nice space once it's all decked out with your uh, furnishings of choice and uh, with some of that lovely lighting that they do in the cabins now on these uh, on these really lovely Genoes little hatch at the side there that just gives access to some of the um, some of the maintenance areas for the boat some of your inlet pipes there and pump out pipes you name it hidden away um, and that I'll just stand back a little bit you get a flavor of that wow that sun is fantastic look at that that's a bright old sunshine a bit of warmth coming through that plexiglass there absolutely lovely but uh, yeah, very nice master cabin that. Very nice indeed on the on this lovely NC37. So that was our cabin spaces. The sun is still out. Absolutely lovely. So let's have a seat out the back in the sun and give you one last look at the uh, this lovely living space. Love the way this all carries on through from cockpit to saloon area double opening door there and the window comes up really is a lovely space that and it feels you know the length feels really good size space for entertaining chilling out and generally enjoying some of the fabulous weather that hopefully you are experiencing in your chosen part of the world absolutely lovely anyway I hope you've uh, hope you've enjoyed enjoyed our look around the nc37 uh, it's been great as always to uh, have a look around uh, such a fabulous you know um, and give you guys a chance to have a look through in detail at, um, at what the nc37 has to offer so um, if you've got any sort of an interest in uh, the nc37 a reminder this one is uh, still for sale so Robin Vaughan here who owns Cambrian Boats um, would be delighted to take your call if you want to know anything more about the NC37 uh, from its workings to its uh, cost to its fuel consumption. A big thank you of course as always to uh, Robin for letting us have a good old uh, ferret around this boat into every nook and cranny for you um, which will hope you give you a good idea of what this fabulous craft is all about. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed the film, then we'd love to get a like and or we'd love to have you as a new subscriber to our channel. And uh, a huge thank you to those of you that have already subscribed to us uh, and are keeping our channel growing as, uh, as we love it to be. So thank you very much. Hope you've enjoyed the NC37 here from Cambrian Boats in Swansea. And we'll see you again very soon. Take care. <laughs>